Welcome back, I'm Tedward and welcome to the 2001 Audi D2 S8. We're here at Garage 42 in Acton, Massachusetts, driving one of the Depreciation Society's daily drivers. So this is a man who collects kind of wild Bentleys and Rolls Royces and Jags. This is one of his daily drivers because the Audi S8, the first generation of the Audi S8, is one of the coolest things ever to hit the streets. And it really set the pace for big, fast, agile Luxo barges going forward. But what's odd about this car is that they didn't sell that many of them. I think they only sold somewhere in the neighborhood of like 1,500 in the United States. The Audi people can check me on this. The numbers are a little fuzzy, but I know they were selling maybe 600 a year, and the last year they sold very few. So why is the S8 special? Well, first, you've got an aluminum body, you've got an aluminum chassis, that's really cool, but under the hood you have a 4.2 liter naturally aspirated V8, five valves per cylinder, putting out 360 horsepower, 317 pound-feet of torque, but it's quattro, so you have all-wheel drive. Today, that may not seem like that big of a deal because, well, everything is all-wheel drive, but in period, early 2000s, you wanted a fast luxury sedan, you weren't getting an all-wheel drive 7 Series or S-Class or the Jag X. JR. Those are all rear wheel drive platforms. So here you had this capable, fast, luxurious all wheel drive beast. And that was a major differentiator back then. Now, the coolest thing about these cars, too, is they're very subtle, kind of like the E39 M5. If you know, you know, but it's even more surreptitious than the E39. You know it's an S because you've got the chrome mirrors and the beautiful Avis wheels. These are the 18-inch Avis wheels, and behind them are four-piston calipers with big old rotors. Now, that was an upgrade from the standard A8 and A8L. The S8 only came in the short wheelbase, but short it is not. This is still a pretty big vehicle, and this rear door, despite being the short wheelbase, still quite long around back you get the s8 badge and no crazy fancy exhaust just this beautiful little twin tip out the left side the design language is subtle it's not out there to be shouty it's to slip under the radar so you can be your autobahn burning monster at 160 miles an hour without being seen or noticed which is exactly why this car became the poster child for the best one of the best chase scenes in the game in Ronin where Robert De Niro chooses this car essentially because of its capability and under the radar vibes so if you're going to do a heist this is the car so first let me just show you around and under the hood because it is beautiful in here typical Audi fashion you've got this little tab and under here you have this Monster V8 so far forward, it's almost completely in front of the front axle, maybe completely in front of the front axle, and you've got your five valve per cylinder indication just to let you know that this is kind of an advanced engine doing some intense breathing. Now, now this is essentially the same engine that you'd get in an A8, but it's just beefed up a little bit with hotter cams and it breathes better with a different intake and exhaust. In the trunk. Atop our deck lid, you've got the GPS, so this does have navigation. And then there's our pretty cavernous and large rear trunk space. So you're allowed to put a lot of stuff in here. It makes for a great limousine or you know trips to the golf course, all that good stuff. And under here, we've got a full-size spare and tools to deal with the carnage if you were to hit something at alarming speeds. Now, the cool thing is, you know, old German cars, they always have this sort of safety vibe. I love this. It's great when you open this up. So even if you were just pulled over on the side of the road, you don't need to go set something up. The second this deck lid is up, you have a reflector. But sure, you could remove that and place that, you know, behind the vehicle, which is probably the safer option. On the rear deck, you see the Audi Bose system logo on the speakers, and back here, a little bit cramped, so you get an idea for why maybe they did have the extended wheelbase in the A8L. And the cabin, super clean, very flush, but if you'll notice up front, there's no navigation screen. It's just kind of an old school style, which today I think is good. If you look at reviews in period, they panned it for that. They said, wow, that's out of touch, out of date. We need, we need our screen. Today, you wouldn't want that screen because it would look 
cheesy and junky. So in addition to its power upgrades, it also handles better because of stiffer anti-roll bars. So it has 30% stiffer springs and 40% stiffer shocks. Unfortunately, these were only available in an automatic Tiptronic style gearbox. You cannot get a manual. Now, early on, I believe with a slightly different engine configuration in Europe, there were some early S8s that you could get with a manual. This is hard to research because they're magazine only, so it's hard to find them online. Not to mention the fact that they were Europe-only cars, so calling it an S8 is a little tricky. Just, I mean, it was an S8, I'm sure, but you know, it wasn't the five-valve V8 with a manual like we have here. And this isn't uncommon. For example, the E39 M5 came to the U.S. in the year 2000 when it had been on sale in Europe for two years prior. But we do have some lovely luxury features in here because, oh, this is the best thing in the world, Audi car phone. Yes. Now... Oof, it's a little tattered. So it goes to show you what happens over many, many years, over 20 years of plastic degradation. But imagine operating your business, calling your kids, calling your wife from the road at 160 miles an hour in your S8 from your dedicated car phone. Now, unfortunately, like I said, it is a little bit in tatters. It would be cool if we could replace this cord. I'm sure that's a tricky thing to do, but maybe that's like an AI design job. I'm sure they could figure that out and make this work once again. We'll have to talk. But I believe the phone was actually installed at port. I don't think that was installed in the factory. So that was something that was very expensive and you'd option out and they'd have to take your car aside and install before going to the dealer. So let's start up our Audi with our key. No buttons here. Take it for a drive. All right, nice low rev. We'll go warm it up, take it out for a little test drive and see how this operates. Got a nice little handbrake and then into drive, our big okay. Super light steering. So what we'll do is we'll kind of go for a short little warm up, get a feel for what it's like. And then we'll romp on it, getting on the highway. Already, I'm just so impressed with how smooth this feels. And the steering is effortless. I mean, this is really light steering. In period, there were owners that were complaining that the car was too stiff. And maybe in relation to their A8, that's true. By today's standards of what we get in a Luxo Barge sports car, this does not feel too stiff whatsoever. This definitely has a lot of comfort to offer even in 2024, especially in 2024. waiting. Oh, the brakes are luxurious, but you can tell they're pretty bitey if you got into them. So we'll get a little better feel for it. But around town, the thing that you want is you want to still be able to do your limo stops. You want to be able to stop smoothly and not be jerking your passengers around by just a breath of brake pedal. And this allows me to really modulate and get in and out of them without worry. At highway speeds, there's such little wind noise. There is no disruption in this cabin. It is silent. Full send on the Prius. Maybe you want to 
get some of these brakes if you're going to be playing like that. In 2001, this steering may have been critiqued as too light. In 2024, we can appreciate that it's tactile, that it's a hydraulic steering pump, that it has a connection to the road. So despite being light, that's okay because we still have better feedback from the road to our fingertips than we do in a lot of modern cars. There's a lot of numbing that goes on. and. Unfortunately, modern cars use steering weight to mimic steering feel. They are not the same. It just gets up and goes quick. Although the transmission isn't some punchy, snappy, gear, gear, gear kind of thing, it's fast enough and it's luxurious. Again, this is not supposed to be brutal, I don't think. I think it's supposed to waft but handle. It is always interesting though when you read old articles about cars like this, they'll say, oh, there's no squat, no dive, no body roll whatsoever. And like maybe relative to a, you know, <laughs> a, a Chevy Cavalier of the time or something, that's very true. There's definitely still some body roll. I mean, we're not we're not rock solid here, but it is composed. So uh, they still have a point. The car definitely knows how to keep itself stable. I mean, you can chuck the car side to side and it's very inspiring. I want to go take this on a slalom. I want to go take this on a back road. And it's odd because it's such a large vehicle. Usually that's not the feeling you get when you get into a big vehicle, but you can tell that they put effort into making this drivable in those scenarios. And frankly, I think this is peak Audi. I mean, I know a lot of great things came after that. I mean, the R8, for example, but I do think that this was a time period where Audi was so differentiated from the market because they had all wheel drive, they had unique power plants, and they had a unique feel. It, it just doesn't feel like a numbers chasing game. Seek alternate routes. All right, well, we'll do a little U-turn here and see what our turning radius looks like. Not too bad. A time before rear steer. It has all the attributes of a real Jekyll and Hyde vehicle where it's a limousine, but it has some tricks up its sleeves that honestly, I don't think your passengers would expect, especially if they're not car people. Normal people would look at this and say, oh, that's a, that's a lovely vehicle. But the exterior does not give you any impression that it's sporty or athletic. The top end of this engine is unbelievable. Everything that happens after 6,000 RPM, mwah, that's pure Audi magic. All of the qualms you might have. Now I know why people deal with you know the, the, the fabled reliability issues. I think I'd suffer through it. Every time I see someone buy a B5S4, you're like, oh no, you're in for it now. Well, you get it when you drive them because they are just magical. So maybe by the numbers, the S55 AMG was the faster car. It could get to 60 quicker, but this is all wheel drive. I don't know that that S55 could do it repeatedly over and over and over again and on varied surfaces. You put this on a slippery wet surface, I bet this is gonna waste that Mercedes most of the time. Now it certainly wouldn't fit into today's marketing from these big brands, but there's something really special about these cars when they were fast and understated. Opulence was taboo. You didn't want to be noticed in some of these cars. If you wanted the Ferrari, you'd buy the Ferrari. But there was something like special about the S badge on an Audi because it was kind of for the people who understood. Or it was something that you could demonstrate in secret. 
you go for lunch with your coworkers in your S4 Avant or your S8 and you stand on it and they're blown away because their Camry doesn't do this <laughs> or their regular 3 Series couldn't even begin to think of getting off the line like a Quattro. This is really cool and I do wish that we would get this sort of old school, understated power back into the 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 hands of consumers so that way we weren't always just shown in your face that this is sporty so i'm going to bring this gorgeous depreciation society audi s8 back to garage 42 and i'm just going to enjoy it soaking up some bumps understandably one of the coolest things i've driven in a long time because i used to see these around now i never see these around this one at 84,000 miles now, sure, it's got a little wear and things like that, but it's been you know, impeccably cared for. And I hope for many years to come, this can knock the socks off of the people who drive it or ride passenger. So thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive. And I'll see you in the next one. Let's see if this opens for us automatically. Yes, we love it. Oh, the Peugeot. What a treat. Too funny. Looks like some Team Champagne Ninjas cards just arrived. <laughs>